Good morning. I'd like to welcome to everyone to Emmanuel Lutheran Church, Warren, Ohio's Facebook Live Worship Service. Our theme today is the Epiphany of the Lord. I have no other announcements. And uh, Pastor Caney? This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, as today we celebrate the epiphany of our Lord. We note our manger scene. The wise men have joined us at the cradle of the Christ child. I need to announce to you that the calling hours for our brother in Christ, Richard Viola, are tomorrow from 11 to 12 at Roberts Park Funeral Home, and there will be a graveside service at 1 p.m. at All Souls Cemetery. I also uh, just want to acknowledge that uh, our technician today is Derek Wilson. My altar assistant is Harry Wentworth. Our lecturer reading the scriptures is Addison Wilson. And they are here today under the watchful eye of their mom, Christina Wilson. And our organist, of course, is Dean C. Hunt. And for anyone that doesn't know, I am your true, truly pastor, Eugene A. King. So let us uh, prepare our hearts into worship with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise God. Have mercy on us.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples and the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn lift up your eyes and look around they all gather together they come to you your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses arms then you shall see a bright then you shall see and be radiant your heart shall th thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you and the wealth of the nations shall come to you a multitude of camels shall cover you the young camels of Meadon and Ephah and all those from Sheba shall come they shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim and praise of the Lord the word of the Lord thanks be to God Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. 
He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the long fields, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of the Parshish and of the Isles shall be a tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress, and the oppressor who has no he shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and, and he shall, shall their blood be in his sight. A reading from Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Jesus Christ, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In his former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant, according to the gift of God's grace that was given by the working of his power. Although I, I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me, to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ, and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Jesus Christ our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Star which they had seen in the east 
went before them till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. of the date of Easter and other movable festivals. Dear brothers and sisters, we have celebrated with joy the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, by the mercy of God, I am able to announce to you the happiness which will come from the resurrection of our Savior. February 17th will be Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the holy season of Lent. On April 4th, we will celebrate with great joy the holy festival of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. On Thursday, the 13th of May, we will celebrate the ascension of our Lord to the glory of the Father in heaven. May 23rd will be the joyous Feast of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. November 28th will be the first Sunday of the Advent of our Lord, to whom be honor and glory, now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to all of you this day from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I announced that the message for today would be given to us by a mystery guest. And you're not going to see this mystery guest, you're just going to see me. But it is his words that I'm bringing you, the reflections of Martin Luther on this day of Epiphany from a sermon that he preached on the visit of the wise men to the cradle of our Lord. Though they saw but a tumble-down shack and a poor young mother with a poor little babe, not like a king at all. They did not shrink, but in great strong faith cast out all misgivings of common sense, and following simply the word of the prophet and the witness of the star, they accepted him for a king, fell on their knees, worshipped him, and presented their treasures. The world would not have done so, but would have looked for a velvet cushion and a host of servants and maids. 
The world makes presents to those who already have enough, and to provide them snatches the bread from the mouths of the hungry who have nothing but what they earn with their bloody sweat. If we Christians would join the wise men, we must close our eyes to all that glitters before the world and look rather on the despised and foolish things. Help the poor, comfort the despised, and aid the neighbor in his need. Do not boast that you have built churches or given much money for masses. God will say, what to me are your churches and masses? What do I care about your altars and your bells? Do I take pleasure in stone and wood? Is not the heaven my throne and the earth the footstool of my feet? Who told you to build churches? I have set before you spiritual temples. These you should build, feed, and help. But you have gone about doing foolish things which I commanded not. I know you not. Let us then observe how these wise men took no offense at the mean estate of the babe and his parents that we may also not be offended in the mean estate of our neighbor, but rather see Christ in him, since the kingdom of Christ is to be found among the lowly and the despised in persecution, misery, and the Holy Cross. Those who seek Christ anywhere else find him not. The wise men discovered him not at Herod's court, not with high priests, not in the great city of Jerusalem, but in Bethlehem, in the stable, with lowly folk, with Mary and Joseph. In a word, they found him where one would have least expected. They presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Incense is a live confession full of faith by which we offer all that we have and are to God. The wise men traversed a long distance to bring this gift. Spiritually, we can bring it swiftly and easily. The gift of our goal is that we should confess Christ as King laying aside our own esteem and the dictates of our reason and good intentions that we should present ourselves as foolish, naked, and ready to be ruled. The sons and daughters of obedience are tractable, gladly accept their king and bring all into submission to Christ. The incorrigibles who resist their king fall into tumult, anger, dissension, murmuring, and blasphemy. Thus we see that incense is faith and gold is hope, because faith believes all that, that all things are and ought to be of God, and hope accepts and sustains what faith believes. The myrrh is love. Faith takes us from ourselves that we should refer everything to God with praise and gratitude. Hope fills us with the concerns of others that we may endure all in patience without resentment. Love reduces us to that nothing which we were in the beginning so that we desire neither goods nor anything outside of God but simply that we should commit ourselves truly to his good pleasure. This is the way of the cross by which we come most speedily into life. We can present our gifts in the same way as the Lord says, inasmuch as you have done it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, 
you have done it unto me. He who gives of his goods to help the poor, to send children to school, to educate them in God's word and other arts, that we may have good ministers, he is giving to the baby Jesus. He was not only born to poor and needy parents, but also on account of Herod, had at once to flee the country. On the journey into Egypt, the presence of the wise men must have come in very handy. So in our day, we should not forget those who are suffering persecution. So far, the words of Martin Luther, we see that he generally spoke straight from the shoulder and did not mince any words, we might have to correct him on one small point where he speaks of the wise men coming to the stable, just as depicted in many of our major scenes, but as the text says, they came to the house because this visit of the wise men occurred sometime after the actual birth of Jesus. It did not her on that Christmas night. It could have been as much as two years later, because you remember when um, Herod asked the wise men what time they had started to see the star. Herod took careful, careful note of that, and it was on that basis that he put to slaughter all the baby boys of Bethlehem who were two years old and under, while, as we know, Jesus was safely carried away to Egypt because an angel warned Joseph in a dream, just as the wise men were warned in a dream not to return to Herod but to go to their own country by another way. And this speaks to us as well, that sometimes as we face various decisions and circumstances in life, uh, we too are led to take another way than the way that might have appeared obvious at first. And so, during this time of the pandemic, as at all other times, we ask God to direct us in the way that we should go. And we are led by not the light of a star, but by the light of his word, which will always direct us to that same Jesus, adored by the wise men and our Savior, who is unity of the Holy Spirit with God the Father lives and reigns now and unto endless ages. Amen. Number 
646 in the With One Voice hymnal, We Three Kings of Orient Are. Uh, this is a beautiful song, which uh, in part ties into some of the folklore that goes along with the celebration of this festival. You know, the Gospel of Matthew never actually told us how many wise men there were, but we arrive at the number three because of the three gifts that were presented. And this beautiful song actually expresses very wonderfully the significance of those three gifts that are presented by the wise men to the infant Jesus.
let us profess our faith by using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten God of the Father, God from light, God, light from light, true God, true God from true God, God begotten, God, not made, of, of one being with the Father. Father. <clears throat> Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this holy house, and for all who in faith, piety, and love come to receive his gifts and praise his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Elizabeth, our bishop, all pastors and congregations, and our parish, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all families and homes, that one generation may tell the next the wonderful works of God in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Donald, our president, Michael, our governor, and all leaders, our legislators, and Congress, those elected and preparing to begin service to our nation and our military. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our catechism, that they may grow in repentance, faith, and holy living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all women with child, with child and all mothers with infant children, that they would have joyful fruitation and success. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and sorrowful, for those who mourn, and for all who stand in need of our prayers, especially the ones we name out loud or silent in our own hearts. For the family of David Cosmo, for the family of uh, Richard Viola, for all who mourn, for all our sick and shutting members, those in nursing homes, those who are confined to their homes, for God's healing mercies. Lord, we keep in our, also our prayers for Dean and Stan. And everyone else that we know is personal in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who commune this day, that they may receive our Lord's blood and body in repentance of faith and for forgiveness of sins, and in the unity of true confession. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, 
and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share the peace of one another.
You are indeed holy, O God, <clears throat> the fountain of all holiness. You bring light from darkness, life from death, speech from silence. We worship you for our lives and for the world you give us. We thank you for the new world to come and for the love that will rule all in all. We praise you for the grace and mercy shown to your people from age to age. Above all, we bless you for your only begotten Son, <coughs> in whom all your promises find fulfillment. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the incarnation of your Son, his human birth, and the covenant he made with us. We remember the sacrifice of his life, his sharing the table with outcasts and sinners and his willing acceptance of death, his rising from the tomb, his ascension to the seat of power, and his sending of the holy and life-giving spirit. We cry out for the resurrection of our lives when Christ will come again in beauty and power to share with us the great and promised peace. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Then now we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we and all who share the spread and cup may be united in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may enter the fullness of the kingdom of heaven, and may receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Remember our brother Richard Viola. In baptism he died with Christ. May he also share Christ's resurrection. Welcome into your kingdom all our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. There we hope to share in your glory where every tear shall be wiped away. On that day we shall see you, our God, face to face. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place with Mary, the Virgin Mother of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, with Joseph, her spouse, with prophets, apostles, evangelists, martyrs, and all the saints, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. <laughs> Temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When we eat this bread, we share the body of Christ. When we drink this cup, we share the blood of Christ. Reveal yourself to us, O Lord, in the breaking of bread, as once you healed yourself.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Session is number 302, as with gladness, men of old. 